Hello everybody, Chris Samardich, Brotherhood of Light Show, current YouTube channel. This week we've got our series on 60s music, and we've got two feature films and two soundtrack albums. we got a double header, or double feature, so let's check it out. Okay, here we go. So, here they are, Zachariah, the film, the soundtrack album. Zabrinsky Point, the film and the Strand Track album. Okay, both these albums are albums and films came out uh, in the in the wake of Easy Rider. So Hollywood was trying to capture uh, the the glory of Easy Rider, which did really well at the box office. So Zachariah, the First electric western. Okay, well, we've had the success of spaghetti western, so they wanted to make an electric western with rock music. And then we have Zabrinsky Point, which is also laced with some of our current rock stars of the day back in 70. And uh, it was made by an Italian director. So we're going to get into Zachariah first. We're going to run down that movie. Now, these are going to be spoiler alerts. And uh, we're going to feature... Uh, there's four major bands in this, this particular two movies. Uh, Zachariah has uh, The James Gang and Country Joe and the Fish. And Zabrinsky Point has Pink Floyd, The Grateful Dead, and Jerry Garcia. So those are going to be sort of our feature artists for this show. So let's, let's check out Zachariah. Okay, here's Zachariah. Uh, so our feature band that opens up the movie is the James Gang. There they are on the left with Joe Walsh as a lead guitarist. And then we've got over on the right here, we've got Country Joe and the Fish. And they're playing the Crackers, which is a outlaw musical gang. Okay. And... Uh, down here on the bottom, we've got uh, Elvin Jones, the drummer, the jazz drummer, and he plays a outlaw in the movie. And uh, then we've got Doug Kershaw over here on the left and the violin player who kind of delivers a song and a, directs our characters to the villain, uh, one of the villains in the film. And then we've got the New York Rock and Roll Ensemble, and they play in the brothel scene at the end of the movie. So uh, we're going to get to the next scene. Let's check it out. So James Gang opens up the scene, and they're playing up here in the Mojave Desert, as you can see. Uh, and uh, it's probably the first band that did the... Uh, you know, playing instruments out in the desert. Now on these, this clip on the left here, you can see like how many other bands, you know, you hit YouTube have, you know, done music videos in the desert. But this is the first one and uh, it opens up the movie and uh, Joe Walsh on the right there playing a clear guitar is doing these power chords. When I saw them back uh, in 1970, they reminded me of American version of The Who and the drummer was definitely drumming like the Who's drummer, and uh, Joe Walsh was playing like Peter Townsend in this particular opening sequence. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, let me get to this next thing. So Elvin Jones is the drummer, and he's called Job, Ca Job Kane's band here. is Over here on the left, uh, Joe Walsh is playing the blue Fender guitar, and he's playing in Joe Kane's bar, and then... Uh, Elvin J James ends up playing a drum solo and then uh, Country Joe and the Fish who play the Crackers okay so an interesting fact that uh, Barry Melton was saying he went out to um, to uh, Spawn Ranch where Charlie Manson uh, ended up living but before that it was a uh, western village that they filmed movies in Hollywood and they trained Country Joe and the Fish to ride horses out there and they ride horses in this movie, in this gang. And they, I don't know if they do all the action sequences, but they definitely are riding horses throughout the film at the beginning. And uh, there they are playing on uh, doing a distraction while our two main characters 
uh, rob a bank. So uh, that's that scene. And uh, so now we're going to get into kind of the story of the movie here. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the was really popular back then. Oh, shit. It was really popular back then. We had uh, the um, Clint Eastwood films. And uh, Clint Eastwood was, uh, you know, the spaghetti western made in Italy. Uh, so this was kind of a take on that, the electric western. And the two stars that uh, Zachariah is Jonathan Rubenstein. He's the guy in the hat. Uh, and then the other guy is uh, Matthew, and that is Don Johnson, a very young version of Don Johnson. And uh, they're two young guys out in the, the West. Uh, the, this is a, a film out in uh, the Mojave Desert on the backside of the Sierras. Uh, they did a lot of the Westerns back then. And uh, so it, it's it's a live action movie. It's, it's filmed outside. It's filmed a 35 millimeter film. So it really transferred well to DVD and even Blu-ray. Uh, so it, it's a good looking movie. And I had the copy. I never really watched the whole movie. I went, sat down and watched it on my big television with a good sound system. And it actually was a decent film. I was really surprised. Uh, it looked really good, most of the movie. Uh, so they end up wanting to be gunslingers. They join the gang, the Crackers. They rob a bank. They move on uh, to uh, now go to, uh, let's see, where is it? Job Kane's bar. And uh, they split up. Don Johnson decides to become an outlaw. And, uh, and Zechariah moves on uh, to other places. So here we go. So we're going to get the next shot. So uh, here's the next scene. And uh, I just want to make a note here. Um, Country Joe uh, and his band was kind of like these rough hippies out of San Francisco. And uh, Don Johnson and, uh, and uh, Jonathan Rubenstein looked like two surfers out of L.A. or Malibu Beach. You know, two pretty boys. It's pretty funny, uh, but anyway, uh, they're the they're the main characters, and they move on, and they end up meeting, uh, doing their final showdown, over at Bell Stars Brothel, which is kind of a cheesy set here on the left, uh, but now they're uh, Don Johnson's all in black, and John uh, and Zachariah's all in white, and. Uh, Elvin Jones, the drummer, is now the outlaw that they're going to have to gun down. Uh, so it was, it's pretty funny. Uh, now we're going to get on to the next scene. So this scene on the left here, uh, they're up at Bell Stars brothel. And Zachariah goes in to make love to Bell. And uh, the New York rock and roll ensemble is playing kind of this hard rock riff. And then when they get into climb into bed and get naked uh all of a sudden they cut to the band playing electric instruments and the band is naked as you can see on this promo cover of the dvd uh and uh it's kind of a cheesy way to to show a love scene but it's you know electric western right anyway uh so then of course in the in the late 80s when uh, Don Johnson did Miami Vice uh, and became a huge TV star, they re-released this movie on, D on uh, you know, home VHS. So there it is. There's the, the album cover. Uh, and there's Don Johnson featured. And then they released it on DVD. Uh, there's one on the left here. And then it's now available on Blu-ray. There's the Blu-ray right there. And... Uh, so the, uh, as the story goes, uh, anyway, the scene they film at the brothel, it looks more like a off-Broadway uh, set piece. It's kind of cheesy. But then they go back to the live action filmed out in the deserts, and, uh, and it ends up where uh, Zachariah and Matthew ride off into the sunset together. So uh, 
I'm not going to spoil the whole movie, but that's basically Zachariah. And I'm going to give it like a five and a half out of ten. Uh, it's, it's interesting to check out. It's a time piece. So now we're going to move on to Zabrinsky Point. So here it is, Zabrinsky Point, uh, directed by Michelangelo Antonio. And there he is, uh, down here in the right-hand corner. He's an Italian director, and uh, he did a movie uh, in 1966 called Blow Up, and it's filmed in England. It has a lot of uh, kind of fashion, nudity, and stuff like that in it, and uh, it's got the uh, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and the Yardbirds do a song in it. So he was kind of the guy that was had the successful European or English movie, and uh, he they brought him over to the United States, and he wrote and directed Sabrinsky Point, and he really gets... Uh, so these Italians, they're really fascinated with places like Death Valley or the American Southwest. He also was fascinated with the uh, the racial movement that was going on in colleges. Uh, really, the main thing that was happening back then was a protest about Vietnam War, but he kind of made it into a, uh, a, a protest of... Um, a black, a, you know, the blacks at college were doing a protest, and uh, it ends up in uh, a shootout. And our two characters here, Mark and Daria, which are up here on the left, uh, Mark ends up uh, getting a gun, and he's at one of these protests, and the black guy gets shot by the by the riot squad. Now the riot, the cops are the bad guys here, and. Uh, He's going to shoot a cop, but then somebody else shoots the cop. So he escapes. He steals an airplane, and he flies uh, out of the airport in L.A., and he flies out uh, across the desert. Now, throughout these scenes, you're going to hear all kinds of sound effects by Pink Floyd. And while he flies the airplane across the L.A. landscape, escaping, he uh, you hear the Grateful Dead song, Dark Star. So he's heading out to Death Valley and uh, to Zabrinsky Point, which is in the picture there. And uh, off of Live Dead, you hear uh, Dark Star. And uh, Pink Floyd also has songs throughout the movie, but they're not as prob predominant as the last song. But uh, you get the vibe. There's, and then Jerry Garcia does a solo song, which we're going to hit in a minute here. So now uh, Daria is works for a real estate company, and she's fly, she's driving on this, this this big Buick across Death Valley to go to Arizona, to meet up with her boss at this uh, development they're doing out in the middle of the desert, and uh, he sees this car and this woman driving it, and he flags her down, and lands the airplane out in the desert, which you can see these scenes right here, and it's out of gasoline, so. They take off, and uh, she hears on the radio that he's somewhat of a wanted character. That there was a shooting, and their guy escaped in a plane. So, uh, so they head up. Uh, she take, takes him in the car, and they're driving, and they head up to Zabrinsky Point. So Zabrinsky Point is kind of a lookout in the middle of Death Valley. It's very beautiful colors, and uh, the director Michelangelo Antonio there he is up on the left filming this love making scene of couples all over the hillside so uh, uh, Mark and Daria end up walking down into this valley and uh, taking off their clothes and they made this love scene and it's Jerry Garcia love scene is the name of the song and uh, it's kind of a famous scene very visual and uh, the movie, it's it's put the longest scene in the movie, and, and Garcia's sweet guitar sound is in it, and they're all rolling around out in the desert, and there's other couples rolling around. It's very artistic and, and kind of a breakthrough. Uh, it's kind of a music video vibe, like you maybe saw back once MTV came out. Uh, so it's it's a it's a famous scene, and Jerry Garcia plays wonderful music in it. So this this came out in 1970 and 
Rolling Stone had been out for a couple of years, magazine, and they, they made the cover because it was kind of this breakthrough kind of hippie film with all this crazy psychedelic music. And there they are in the valley making love naked. That's the uh, poster for the movie. And uh, all this little sequence on the side here is just, you know, you can kind of go through it. There's Daria's boss, the real estate, and then there's the riot with the guy, the blood at the college. And, and then uh, he escapes in the airplane and flies to Zabrinsky Point and they meet and make love out in the desert. And then Mark ends up flying the plane back and he mentions early in the film, he doesn't mind dying. That's obviously one of the central, his central theme. And he ends up getting shot by the police at, uh, when he land, when he brings a plane back to the airport. And it's a, you can see the police cars on an airport strip and they shoot him. And then Daria is kind of like heartbroken. And then she goes out to, uh, finally ends up at the mansion in Arizona and meets up with her boss. And there's another big scene with Pink Floyd music coming up here. Okay, so here we got the final scene of the movie. And uh, she's kind of heartbroken. She goes into this unbelievable mansion built up in these rocks. And it's got swimming pools. And her boss is trying to sell these guys on developing the desert. And they're not buying it. And then she leaves... Uh, and she heard on the radio that Mark had been killed and she's heartbroken. And then she just sees this thing implode and get blown up and they repeat it over and over again. And then they cut to this Pink Floyd song, which is called, uh, come in 51, your time is up. And it shows all this, this slow build and this big scream, the Pink Floyd thing and uh, the audio. And then, all these explosions happen where they blow up TVs and clothes and food are flying. And it's just kind of like reminds me of, of uh, you know, I've seen pianos blow up and music videos and, and cars crash and stuff like that. So it, it has, it's kind of a breakthrough visually with this wild music and Pink, that Pink Floyd provides. Now this is previous to, uh, to Dark Side of the Moon, supposedly one of the songs was a was eventually turned into one song on Dark Side of the Moon. I don't really know from this film, this audio session for this film, but uh, it's kind of a crazy movie. It, ha it it hits the different points of uh, of the culture of the time, but it also now this movie was just did terrible at the box office. Was pan, but it's known to be kind of an underground favorite, and you know. People watch it in film school just to study it. And uh, he's quite a famous director, but I think he kind of missed the mark on it. So there is Antonio, uh, or Michelangelo Antonio on the left there, filming in Death Valley, Zabrinsky Point. There's Pink Floyd, Zabrinsky Point, Lost Album. There's a album. Uh, and then there's the Grateful Dead playing Dark Star Live. And there is a beautiful Zabrinsky Point. And uh, so, uh, you know, these are really interesting movies. And, uh, you know, for the time, uh, they were not successful, but uh, they're still known. People still watch them. So we're back. We've got the uh, Electric Western and we've got Zabrinsky Point, and I would give them, I would rate them both at five and a half stars out of ten. Uh, definitely worth checking out, but, you know, I'm not going to say they're the greatest movies ever, because they're not. And then uh, the soundtrack album's probably not worth picking up, but who knows, you know, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, I think you got to have it, because uh, it's, it's kind of like the lost Pink Floyd album. So I'm going to sign off, and... Uh, I hope you guys subscribe. Uh, this one's kind of a, a turkey show. It's not like super popular, but uh, it's some really unique stuff that came out of 1970 and 1971, and uh, it's worth checking out. So I'm going to sign off and say goodbye and have a good one. Check it out. Brotherhood of Light Show Current YouTube channel. Subscribe if you feel like it. I could use some more.